time ago, I here was king, my lady. I am he who was the naked master of the melodious woods, where there were miraculous caves of enchantment. Spain, here I was king, until one day your terrible brigantines arrived, with your armored sons, who with firearms and swords lay waste my kingdom and my people. I lost all, and even my language, which as the ring dove sobs and sings, and which even as honey is soft of scent pursued, agonizes in my throat. My poor crested owl, living phantom of the tribe, weeps still its bitter love ever since that day. I am the nude and pensive king who, one time ago, did here reign, my lady. This is a story that began 500 years ago when all of Paraguay's geography, enveloped in astonishing wilderness, was the domain of an extraordinary native race. T'was a race that once conquered, lay down its crown to merge as Spanish Guarani stock. In their immense green empire, the natives lived in total liberty until that fateful day when by surprise the Paraguay River carried upstream unknown ships. The brigantines were commanded by bold Spanish conquerors. The unwritten history of millenniums changed its course and a new breed of man was born. Fascinated by the constant discovery of new wonders, the explorers ranged over fields and through forests. Despite resistance from the Indians, the Europeans were successful in gaining many achievements. In 1537, Juan de Salazar y Espinosa founded the city of Asuncion. Situated in the heart of South America, Asuncion was built on the left bank of a wide bend of the Paraguay River. Now the capital city of Paraguay, Asuncion has grown into a populous and dynamic urban center where lordly colonial buildings provide a curious contrast to modern structures of metal, concrete, and glass. the 16th century, strange melodies invaded the lands and dominions of the Guarani Indians. Various musical instruments, played masterfully by missionary priests, caught the Indians' attention. Drawn by their curiosity, the Guarani Indians were soon captivated and overtaken by the magical enchantment of such wonderful harmonies. They put aside all hostility and decided to accept the way of the gospel. The creation of the Misiones del Paraguay province, signed by the Father General of the Society of Jesus in Rome in 1604, 
marked the starting point for one of the most passionate and beautiful stories ever to be written in man's history. Within a few years, more than a hundred thousand natives were gathered into thirty settlements called Reducciones, an active religious life marked by harmony and hard work prevailed throughout the province. The great prosperity acquired by means of perfect organization allowed for rapid social, artistic and cultural development. However, in the year 1767, by order of King Charles III, the Jesuit priests were expelled from all Spanish colonies. Today, more than two centuries after this sad decision, we gaze upon the testimony of that grand undertaking and ask ourselves, how could such colossal works have been built in the depths of the forest? Of the 30 original settlements, Due to territorial disputes and border changes, only seven now remain within Paraguay's boundaries. This is Santissima Trinidad Church, located 400 kilometers southeast of Asuncion and 35 kilometers northeast of Encarnacion. Construction of this temple began in 1706. The project is attributed to Brother Juan Bautista Primuli, a renowned Italian architect born in Milan in 1673. Perfectly sculptured images adorn the entrance hall and walls of this church. In its architectural style, we can appreciate both the expressions of faith and the artistic maturity of its builders. As we make an analysis of style, it becomes evident that Baroque art, which dominated Europe at one time, flourished also in Paraguay. Brilliant presentations by the first Philharmonic Orchestra of the River Plate and by the Polyphonic Chorus, a choir which counted some 200 native voices, fill these temples with music and majesty. The masterly compositions of the great Domenico Zipoli were performed here in an artistic manner worthy of the cathedrals in the Old World. This is a clear example. This pulpit, unique in design, was reconstructed from approximately 1,500 original pieces, which were found scattered and buried under earth and debris. Its chief beauty lies in the diversity of decorative motifs with which it is adorned. Another priceless relic which has been preserved is this baptismal font. Carved out of a single block of stone, the gigantic piece was found buried intact. It dates back to 1720. The base reliefs of the friezes deserve special mention. The Guarani Indians had a definite fondness for music. Just as they carved angel musicians, with perfection, some of the native musicians surpassed their own masters as players of musical instruments. Inside the nave of this church, there is a crypt where the remains of priests and other outstanding individuals were laid to rest. All other community members were buried in the adjacent cemetery located beside the church. Not far away stands a sturdy tower 
Because of its square base, it seems logical to think of it as the bell tower. This chapel is considered to be the first church built in the settlement. Note the beautifully decorated columns. The Indian's house speaks of the esteem in which the natives were held. This may be deduced from the robust Roman arches decorated with carved stone rosettes. Such features blend in a curious duality of style in these typical buildings. The magnitude of work and the beauty and decoration fully justify the fact that construction of this church took almost half a century. Seemly routine, life in the missions flowed in a rhythm of art, work, study and religious experience. The workday began at sunrise. The basic diet consisted of garden produce, grain crops, meat, and yerba mate, the native tea. This product was not only an important food staple, but also was marketed to pay the tribute required by the Spanish crown. At work time, Everyone went about his or her specific duties, which were quite varied. This building was a workshop. Various craftsmen worked here. Carpenters, woodworkers, blacksmiths, tool makers, and those who fashioned musical instruments, bells, sculpture, and paintings. In addition, the first printing press to operate in the area was located here. Many women were occupied with child care activities throughout the day, seeing to the children's dietary and educational needs. Others were involved in textile activities and were responsible for spinning, dyeing, weaving cloth, and making garments. This was an important task as sameness in dress distinguished the Indians as members of the community and at the same time as souls.